If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video before trying to attempt this question on your own. What we might want to do first is draw a picture that represents the given description. So in the picture we have a non-conducting sheet and you'll notice that we have included some positive charges on that non-conducting sheet. We know that the sheet has positive charge because of this so-called surface charge density value right here. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that that surface charge density has a positive sign on it, indicating that the charge overall on that sheet is positive. Now, we learned from previous chapters that when an object such as a sheet has positive charge on it, that it will produce an electric field, and that electric field will always point away from positive charge. So we can see that we've drawn the electric field arrows projecting to the right to indicate that the field, the electric field, is pointing away from that sheet. Then we are told that there is a particle of charge Q0 that is moving from the sheet to a distance that is 4.34 centimeters away from the sheet. So we can represent that scenario as follows. We might draw a positive charge that begins right here. This is our Q0. We know that it's positively charged because of the given value over here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to move it a distance that we might call D. And then that's given as 4.34 centimeters. And our task is to calculate how much work is done in doing that. Now, once again, we know from previous chapters that the work done on a charge, or frankly, on any object, is equal to the dot product between the force acting on that object and the displacement of that object. And we recall that we can rewrite a dot product as the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of an angle. This angle will be between the force and the displacement vector. We should put little arrows over those guys to indicate that they are vectors. Now we can see from our picture that the displacement vector is pointing to the right. And that's simply because the initial position of our charge is located right here. And then the final position is located over here and therefore the displacement will overall be to the right. As to the force, we know that because there's a positive sheet, there would be an electrical force that's pushing the positive charge along. And so the electrical force that's pushing this charge along would be pointing also to the right in this manner right here. And therefore we can see from our picture that the angle between the electrical force and the displacement would actually be zero degrees. And we might recall that the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one. You can double check that certainly on your calculator. So our work equation simplifies to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement. Now we mentioned that this force was an electrical force. And on the side we might note that an electrical force was equal to the charge multiplied by the electric field. So we're going to make a substitution for this electrical force right here, and we're going to replace it with Q times the electric field, and then again times the magnitude of the displacement. Finally, we recall from the previous chapter, I believe it was chapter 23, that the electrical field that is produced by an infinite non-conducting sheet was derived using Gauss's law and that was equivalent to the surface charge density which is symbolized by Sigma divided by 2 times epsilon and we remember that epsilon is just a constant so we're going to make yet another substitution for the electric field produced by this infinite non-conducting sheet and we'll put in the surface charge density divided by 2 epsilon. And this expression finally gives us the work done in moving that point charge a distance of 4.34 centimeters. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the known values. 
the charge was given up here, so that's our value for Q. And I believe it was times 10 to the negative 19th. Yeah. The surface charge density was given as well. That's this value right up here. And we'll notice that that value is given in picocoulombs per meter squared. So when we plug it in, we're going to make sure, because it's in picocoulombs, that we multiply that by 10 to the negative 12. And that's going to get it into the standard unit of coulombs per meter squared. Multiplied by our distance, and that was 4.34 centimeters. We'll have to convert that into meters, again, making it into a standard unit. So you just move the decimal place twice to the left. So you'll have 0 0.0434 meters. And finally, we're going to divide it by 2 times epsilon. And there we have the value of epsilon, which you could look up in your reference tables of your textbook. When you plug all these values in, we're going to end up with 5.96 times 10 to the negative 21, and of course the standard unit for work is joules, and this would give us the answer to part A. Moving back to part B, it says if the electric potential V is defined to be zero on the sheet, what is V at point P? Recall that point P is the point to which we had moved that charge Q naught. Now let's recall that the potential difference between two points, which we might write as VF minus VI, is defined as negative the work done by the electric field divided by the charge. Now for the initial potential, that would be the potential located right here on that non-conducting sheet. The question notes that that is defined to be zero on the sheet. So in other words, VI is equal to zero. So we'll come back and we can plug that in and that would just reduce to VF on the left-hand side of the equation. We already have the work done by the electric field. We determined that in part A, so we can go ahead and plug that in. Apparently my toddler daughter agrees. And then we'll divide this by the charge, which again was given as 3.20 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And when we crunch that down, we get negative 0.0186 joules per coulomb as the answer to part B.